Welcome to this video. Today we're going to be doing a maintenance on this Riparium and my Paladarium, which I set up not too long ago. I have a build log in my channel. And I want to go over some of my methodology as well, just from my own experience. I'm not an expert or anything, I'm just a hobbyist. But I want to explain kind of my thought process of why I do some things. And you might be surprised because we're actually not going to be doing a water change today. And you'll see a little bit later how I'm able to get away with that. The short answer is I test my water, but it kind of ties into my method of putting a ton of plants into my tanks, so much so that I tend to have more problems of nutrient deficiencies rather than excess nutrient buildup in the water. And I do that by feeding effectively, so not too much, uh, dosing regularly uh, to the water column so that all my plants can get the nutrients they need, uh, dosing root tabs, uh, and CO2 injection certainly helps as well. Now, just to explain a little bit of what's going on here, I'm just making my rounds uh, to tidy up some things around the tank, and now I'm filling up a small container with water so that I can take the trimmings and put them into that small container. So, now I'm just starting to hack away really heavily on this moss. I had to cut a lot of this footage out because there was a lot to go through. So we're just going to sit back and watch me trim some moss. And one other thing I want to note here is I'm actually not going to trim every single plant in this tank. And that's because a, I don't think it really needs it. I kind of like the overgrown grip look. It looks really good from far away, especially. And another thing is when you trim your plants down super heavily, especially all at once, it puts all of your plants into shock at the same time. And there's a period of a few days where they have to heal and adjust to this new condition that they're put in. So you tend to run more risk of algae in those scenarios. So I prefer to make the rounds kind of a few plants at a time and make sure that there's a good buffer of healthy, fast growing plants always growing. Okay, now we're gonna move on to some of the equipment maintenance. So only a couple things have to happen here, really. I'm gonna clean the CO2 diffuser and I'm gonna wipe down the walls. And I'm not gonna clean the filter intake because I feel like it doesn't really look clogged or anything, so. It's kind of a pain to take apart, so I'm just gonna skip it for now. The CO2 diffuser definitely takes priority here because if that gets clogged, then it could cause a pH swing, and a pH swing could really cause some damage to my shrimp especially. Next up, we're gonna test the water to see if we need a water change. Once a tank establishes like this, I tend to not really need to do many water changes on it, unless I'm overfeeding or I have heavy stock. But as you can see, my nitrates are only around five to 10 PPM, and that's a pretty healthy level and it's very stable. So I don't really need to do a water change. If I were to do a water change, I'd probably run into a big nutrient deficiency in this tank, and then you'd start to see it in the plant growth. So again, as I mentioned before, it's kind of the reverse problem where I don't have enough nutrients. So this is actually the next day. And when I said we weren't gonna do a water change, it was a little bit of a lie. Uh, we're gonna be putting water back into this tank and then taking the water out. I would treat this more as a water top off because I'm using the tank water to fill up a lot of other tanks and I'm using it to water my plants. This is kind of the other side of maintenance that extends beyond the tank. I do want to note if you do take water from one tank and put it into another tank, you run the risk of moving any kind of parasites or disease over to that tank as well. All of my stuff is quarantined uh, and everything is healthy, so it's not really a problem for me, but I'm also only adding these to setups without fish that can actually catch those diseases, like the Riparium only really has pest snails that showed up on their own. Speaking of the Riparium, or Bull Riparium, I guess there's a few now, 
I'm actually going to be adding some of the moss from the trimming uh, from the day before into the bowl. And that's because a few of the plants in here died off and I just kind of neglected this thing for a few months. It seems to be doing okay. Some of the leaves are crispy, but the maidenhair fern, some of the moss, the floating plants all seem to be growing at least decently. And now we're just doing some final touches on the riparian before we're going to call it quits and move on to the paludarium. Now the paludarium was a lot quicker, it's a lot smaller of a tank, so it makes sense. And it's pretty much the same methodology, but I'm going around and I'm trimming a lot more species this time around because I have a lot more fast growers, a lot more immersed growth at least. So trimming this trade scantia species, a lot of the palea, I'm actually skipping the maidenhair fern, I'm skipping taking floating plants out and I'm only really trimming a handful of the uh, hydrocotyl tripartita and everything else is pretty much left as is. Now quick tip on how to get bushy plants, especially these stem plants like the palea and the tridscantia species. When you trim them, there will be two growth points coming out of that node and so what you can do is you can trim them back really hard, especially at the beginning, wait for those two growth points to emerge grow a little bit and then you trim it back again and so you end up getting it splitting into two stems then to four then to eight and you kind of get an exponential growth and that leads to a really bushy looking plant also want to note this paludarium grew a mushroom it just kind of came out of nowhere i think it came in on my mood moss but it's super tiny i don't know what it is exactly maybe you can leave a comment tell me what it is but this thing looks really cute in place of the jewel orchid while it's in rehab, I think this looks great. And that just about does it for the maintenance. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, whatever you feel like. And I also have a TikTok and Instagram, plants and water, I'll have links down below. Hope you have a good day and enjoy some footage of the paludarium. <laughs>